You may have seen the video last week. It's shocking. A store clerk at a smoke shop has two masked individuals enter his store. One grabs something, seemingly distracting the clerk. He runs over while the other man jumps the counter, again, wearing a ski mask and a hoodie. The store clerk takes a knife and plunges it several times into this robber. The dude is heard screaming, oh man, he's stabbing me or something. We have an update. The store clerk has uh, given some statements. He's responded and explained what went down, what happened afterwards, and the story is just absolutely crazy. And I want to get into what Ron DeSantis is doing with this story, why he fired this Florida prosecutor who's outraged, and this is exactly why. In these cities, crime is skyrocketing, and people have had enough. Ron DeSantis is not just going after these woke DAs. He's going after woke corporations and woke finance. His images are brutal. So I'm going to be putting on a, a, an image blur for uh, just so you, we can't really show these images. Vegas smoke shop owner recounts how masked robber he stabbed begged for his life by Andy No. When masked bandits stormed his Las Vegas smoke shop, all Johnny Nguyen wanted, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, want, uh, had to defend himself was a pocket knife and a belly full of being a victim. It turned out to be enough. Nguyen, who fended off the August 3rd robbery is a heroic, in a heroic moment seen on viral surveillance video, told the Daily Wire in an exclusive interview what happened after he took down one of the thieves. I want to pause for just a minute and just say, very heavily diving into opinion on this one. That's fine. I don't know. Um, it's tough. I, I, I don't like seeing anybody get stabbed or killed or anything like that. I will not, however, blame uh, Nguyen for defending himself when a guy in a ski mask jumps his counter. I just, man, heroic. Look, tragedies like this, I personally, I don't know. I don't know, man. If dude ran into a store to save this guy, heroic. A guy defending himself. The reason why I say this is twofold. One, I don't want there to be this kind of violence. But also, I don't think we should be, I don't, I don't think we should have to be in situations where our lives are being threatened. And when we defend ourselves, it's called something extraordinary. If you are in your home, if you are in your store and someone threatens your life, it is ordinary, not heroic, ordinary for you to say, I will not be victimized. I will defend my property. With respect to Andy No's statement, my point is just simply this. I don't want to put this on a pedestal. Again, because I don't like the violence, but also, yo, know, if someone breaks into my house, I'm defending myself. That's basic. That's ordinary. That's standard. You know, my kind of, I, the way I kind of feel about this is how they say, you know, an AR-15 comes with a high capacity magazine with 30 rounds. And no, it's standard. That's standard. It is not heroic to defend yourself. It is expected and ordinary. That's the mentality we need to have so that we can stop these kind of robberies. But I digress. I digress. I also want to stress, I don't want to encourage violence, but I do want to encourage people to defend themselves from bodily harm or death. The suspect leapt over the counter and was coming at Nguyen when the shopkeeper fought back, stabbing him at least seven times with a pocket knife. This wasn't my idea. Please don't let me die. The man said, the suspect said, as he called out, as he called 911. While Nguyen called for an ambulance, the thief who claimed to be 17 called his mother. He told his mom he was dying and that he robbed the store. According to Nguyen, the incident began when two masked males walked into his smokes, uh, Nguyen's Smokestrom smoke shop. So this, he may be the owner. A third suspect held the door open from outside. Nguyen, a Vietnamese American originally from Florida, said his heart was racing despite his calm demeanor seen in the footage. In the 10 months he's been in business, his store has been robbed twice. Quote, I assume they had a firearm, Nguyen told the Daily Wire, noting one of the suspects had partially unzipped his backpack in front of his torso. Quote, why are you guys wearing masks like that? Nguyen can be heard asking on video before pleading with them to just leave. In the video, one bandit can be seen taking the tip jar, grabbing other items and fleeing. But the other one leaps and jumps over the glass case towards Nguyen, who grabs the knife and defends himself. I'm dead. I'm dead. The suspect can be heard shouting as he falls to the floor. Angelica Nielsen, who works at a nearby restaurant, saw and recorded some of the aftermath. 
I just saw two guys running for their lives from our shop window. The suspect fled down an alley before police and an ambulance arrived. Video she recorded outside Nguyen's smoke shop shows the robbery suspect on a gurney being wheeled into an ambulance. Nielsen said Nguyen has earned the respect of area merchants since taking over the smoke shop a little less than a year ago. He came over to introduce himself and asked how to use our microwave. He was so sweet. Las Vegas Metropolitan Police arrested two individuals, including the suspect who is expected to recover. So not dead. It is not yet known if Nguyen could face charges himself. But Nielsen has set up a GoFundMe campaign for any potential legal fees Nguyen could incur. Meanwhile, Nguyen said he has bought a gun. Good for him. He said he worries that publicity around the video could make him a target, even though he's actually seen a slight uptick in business. But he ultimately stood by his decision to release the surveillance video. Maybe the video might prevent other stores from getting robbed because robbers will think this one will fight back. His advice to other small business people, don't give people a chance to harm you or your store. Nguyen was back behind the counter the next day and says the community has been supportive, but he says his parents back in Miami are worried. They told me I should sell the shop, go apply for med school and become a doctor. Very Asian, he chuckled. <laughs> I stand with Nguyen, 100%, 100%. We, I've, I've talked extensively about this incident, and there are a lot of people trying to claim that maybe he's going to get charged. I reject that. You have, I will not assume, nor will I expect anyone else to assume that you will be safe when a man in a ski mask jumps over your counter. No. At that point, all of these things combined, you should assume danger. A person is breaking the law. To what extent will they break it is not what you should be thinking about. Staying safe. He's behind a counter. Where does he go? You got a guy holding the door. You got a guy distracting you and a guy in the wearing ski masks. Protect yourself before it's too late. I'm glad to hear that the thief, the robber, is going to recover. And I mean it. You know, look, I don't, I, 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 a lot of people, they have, they say, make my day and things like that, bro. I don't want anybody dying. I don't want anybody engaged in violence, but I will stress the man who jumped the counter started the fight. If someone lunges at you with their fists drawn and then you defend yourself, should you go to jail? But he didn't actually, he, no, 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 no. In some states, I believe this is how it works in Illinois. As soon as you make a threatening gesture or motion, that's assault. So if you lunge at someone, they're allowed to defend to defend themselves. Now, Illinois is pretty strict when it comes to weapons and things like that. So don't expect you can defend yourself to, uh, you know, to 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 uh, any extent. But um, my understanding, having grown up in Illinois, is that assault is when you put someone within reasonable fear of harm. And battery is when you actually harm or make physical contact to embarrass. So battery can be spitting on someone. But if someone jumped the, jumped the counter where I come from, they'd be like, you were assaulted and you can, you can defend yourself. Again, I don't know how Illinois operates in terms of what the court will actually do. But this story and this update, this is huge. This is exactly why you get these stories uh, like this one from the Daily Mail. Soros-backed prosecutors suspended by DeSantis for refusing to enforce state's abortion bans. The governor is trying to overthrow democracy. Is that what you call democracy in Vegas? Is that what you call it, dude? They elected me, and if I choose not to prosecute, get out of here. No, that's not democracy. That is anarcho-tyranny. This is the problem with, with, with outright democracy. I have never been a democracy fan. And, any, and, and all the people on the left are shocked, like, oh, but democracy. No. Democratic institutions? Yes. Republicanism? Yes. Not the Republican Party. Republicanism. Representative democracy. Constitutional republic. Let's get specific. Direct democracy is what I'm talking about. It's a bad thing. People in the majority elect a man who says he will watch the system burn. And do you know why they don't care? Because the Democratic Party has become the party of the wealthy. That's a fact, not an opinion. It was reported on by Vox in 2016. They have become the preferred party for the elite and the wealthy. So when poor people are being victimized, yeah, 
they don't care. Not at all. So they don't care when you have these prosecutors. Ron DeSantis removing him is what needs to be done. If he says he will not do his job, then Ron DeSantis removes him. When you when you vote for a prosecutor, you're looking for individual discretion and you're looking for someone to do a good job. It's not. Let me stress this. When you're electing a prosecutor, you know what the key component is that they will succeed in their prosecutions. That's right. It's not the only element. Discretion, prosecutorial discretion is important as well. But the idea is a person. Let's, let's put it this way. A, a man on camera brutally murders someone. Your prosecutor fails to get a conviction. They're a bad prosecutor. That's what you're voting for. You're voting for someone to uphold the law and to do it properly. Now, within that, there is some prosecutorial discretion. It may appear a person committed crime and the prosecutor can say, look, when you look at the finer points, I do not believe this warrants a prosecution. This individual was wrongly placed or blah, blah, blah. People may be mad. That's a good prosecutor. This prosecutor said, no, blanket. They, you know, when it comes to abortion, for instance, won't prosecute anybody, even though they're breaking the law. That is not what you are elected to do. Think about it. When you elect a state rep or senator, they pass laws. You want those laws enforced. You're not voting for a prosecutor to decide if the law should be enforced or not. For the most part, again, I know there's discretion. You're voting for them to uphold the law to the best of their abilities. You see what's happening in Vegas with the smoke shop owner. And it's exact. It's the result of this insane Soros backed prosecutor nonsense. Now, they'll try and claim accusing the, 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 them of being Soros backed, blah, blah. George Soros wrote an op ed in the Wall Street Journal outlining what he was doing and why he was doing it. And they still try to argue that it's, it's anti-Semitic or something to call out George Soros. He's one guy. He's one guy. Ron DeSantis is taking it to the next level. He's taking on woke corporations. Good. Absolutely. I think it's what needs to be done. Because what we're seeing is not just about these prosecutors. It's about the encroachment of wokeism, period. And this is why I think Ron DeSantis is actually, I mean, I, I, he's a contender for 2024 outright, rivaling Trump in the predicted polling. CPAC has Trump over two thirds of the votes, but we need someone who's going to actually challenge wokeness and knows what's up. With, with all due respect to Trump for the things that he's done that I like, the challenge with Trump is he didn't take on wokeism until what, the last year in office? He didn't fire enough people. Granted, he did schedule F. Took him a while to do it, and maybe because he was jammed up by the Russiagate stuff. He did fire a decent amount of people, but he also hired some bad people. Ron DeSantis has fired this prosecutor. I want to see a President DeSantis fire as many prosecutors as they can. I want to see it. And I think he might do it. What DeSantis is doing now is he's going after woke finance. Check it out. He says, the concept is sound. Financial institutions are the bloodstream of private enterprise. A business or an individual cut off from them is economically helpless, preventing banks and other financial entities from using their market power to force compliance with their views maintains everyone's freedom. Imagine you couldn't set up a bank account because of your views. Why? Yes, there are many people who have had those issues. There are many people on the right who have had access to their accounts frozen, their money taken from them. Just recently, Eric July and the reverse had their money frozen by PayPal. You couldn't open a credit card or deposit your paycheck. You'd be consigned to the cash economy, which is increasingly shrinking as more and more stores go cashless. Yet some companies have already taken steps toward that horror. During the mass trucker protests in Canada, GoFundMe decided to withhold funds. People who worry. The DeSantis' proposal would infringe upon the freedoms of financial companies, ignore how we already circumscribe corporate liberties to maintain individual freedoms. Businesses used to, used to send political messages in workers' pay packets. That's now illegal, even though it directly limits political speech. Labor unions can have access to corporate property under certain circumstances as courts seek to balance the business property rights against the employee's right to join a union. DeSantis' measure would simply extend this old principle to a new problem. Bravo! One can even argue that this principle, that private economic power can be regulated to preserve individual freedom and autonomy, is at the heart of the modern state. The early economic regulations of the progressive era, such as minimum wage laws and the regulation of monopolies, were often opposed as infringements on the freedom of corporations and their owners. You get the point. Ron DeSantis is saying enough. 
I don't believe GoFundMe should be allowed to do what they do. And they all claim Section 230. Something must be done. Something must be done. Wikipedia is a really good example of who I think should be sued into oblivion because Wikipedia does not aggregate user comments. Now, while Wikipedia does allow users to make edits, it is Wikipedia itself that creates the final aggregation. Notably, the difference between Twitter, Facebook, Washington Post, or whatever, is that Wikipedia takes comments and then compiles it into an article that says, from Wikipedia, they put their byline on it. When you look at the front page of an article on Wikipedia, you are not looking at user edits that say, by John, by Bill, by Janet. It says, from Wikipedia. Sue them into oblivion. Now, Twitter, you see a tweet from me. It says, at Timcast, and I said a thing. That I understand. You can't sue Twitter because I said a thing. But on Wikipedia, Wikipedia says the thing. Now, I'd sue Wikipedia, but I don't have standing. My Wikipedia article actually is opinion, and it's not really all that bad. Now, with uh, Project Veritas, for instance, I think they should. This is one of the big challenges that Ron DeSantis will face in this move towards dealing with woke civil issues. So let me, uh, let me kind of put these things together. What Ron DeSantis has done is he's going after criminal and civil instances. The, the Andy No story about this guy in Vegas, that's criminal issues where the woke are causing damage. Then we have this, the civil area where the woke are causing damage. I'd like to show you something. Why we need to make a change. And I'm going to call out NewsGuard. The good news. NewsGuard has certified Timcast as credible. Green check mark 82 out of 100. And also they have stated it is impossible if they so decide to actually earn a perfect score. I will say this, and I hope uh, NewsGuard is listening. I am considering litigation. And I'll tell you why. What Ron DeSantis is doing is what needs to be done. Everyone needs to fight tooth and nail to stop this kind of BS. And I agree. We're doing a lot of things over at uh, TimCast.com because I believe in putting my money where my mouth is. There's a a, so I will keep this preliminary, but um, I will likely be providing funding to a small pod style micro school um, because I believe education and, and children's education is one of the most important things. I talk about it all the time. So I've recently had some meetings about providing funding on an ongoing basis so that locals can have sound education with parental involvement. I will not just leave it up to Ron DeSantis to pass these bills. At the same time, we have strived over at TimCast.com to make sure we are abiding by the rules, the policies of NewsGuard. You may notice that in all of the articles I use, with extremely rare exceptions, the articles are NewsGuard certified. I bring them up fairly often. NewsGuard has rated TimCast credible, but they've given us one red check mark or one red X. They say we don't gather and present information responsibly. Okay, I'm going to lay out my argument that NewsGuard is, for one, this is defamatory because we are responsible and argue that this is the issue with the biased machine, and we must challenge it and push back. They say, a website run by Tim Pool, a popular conservative-leaning YouTube personality, which has occasionally published inaccurate and misleading claims, occasionally refers to, I believe, about five stories over a year and a half of about thousands of stories. They have found, count them on your hand, amount of articles. That's what they said was inaccurate, misleading. Of those, Two of them are because we reported on quotes from Donald Trump. That's it. We published misleading claims because Donald Trump said a thing and we didn't fact check him. As I stated to NewsGuard, we factually reported Donald Trump had a quote in response to someone else. We weren't running a fact check. We were running a news article saying the president says X. I responded. However, if your policy requires that we fact check quotes. It does seem like an impossible standard, but we will implement that policy. So be it. They still said no, it doesn't matter. And this is where I think NewsGuard is engaging in what what is uh, it's an it's an opinion to say you're, you're acting responsibly or not. However, there is the grounds that I can show USA Today, for instance, they had 27 articles outright plagiarized. They took those down. They get 100 out of 100. They have had inaccurate fact checks. Many news outlets have published false and misleading claims. 
But NewsGuard doesn't say that about them. Why not? We have, I think, thousands of articles, thousands over a year and a half, and we get dinged. Even when we say to NewsGuard, we will do anything you think is necessary for us to get a perfect score, they say, no. I'll tell you what else. In NewsGuard's fact check, they have also, in my opinion, libeled us. They say, Tales from the Inverted World podcast features science fiction and fantasy stories. No, it doesn't. Now, arguably, you can say that maybe if Shane Cashman passively mentions someone else told them a story, that's what they're alluding to. But no, this, the podcast doesn't feature these stories. You might try to argue an opinion statement. All of the stories on Tales from the Inverted World are true. They may not be. I'll put it this way. Shane is a skeptic an inquisitive skeptic approaching this world and conveying a true story of his experiences. They falsely claimed that uh, that it was science fiction and fantasy. By all means, NewsGuard, go ahead and argue that it's uh, uh, you, you didn't mean that the stories themselves were, but they included them. Fine. They go on to mention a few things that are incorrect. One, that I'm the top editor of TimCast.com. I'm not. Cassandra McDonald is. She has final say on all the articles. I simply intervene if I see there's a factual error and request corrections, which they can then make. When NewsGuard came in and I responded, I said, we will make corrections. And I went to the news team and said, they require corrections. I am not the top editor. They also go on to mention that I was an editor at Vice and Fusion. False. NewsGuard has has published false statements about fee, which I can chalk it up to a mistake. Anyway, here's my point. The only way to win is to... Well, Ron DeSantis gets it. I have made requests for correction to news guards, to news guard, and I've, I've uh, insisted that they give us a 100 percent. They list a handful of stories and they say that a couple of them, fair point, Trump made a quote and we didn't, uh, notably the January 6 story about the National Guard. Trump made a claim about Nancy Pelosi. We did not include a counterclaim from Pelosi and the sergeant at arms. I thought that was fair that we should, but it wasn't a factual inaccuracy, nor was it irresponsible. It was an editorial decision. They have claimed we're irresponsible because we haven't made their select editorial decisions outright. But we agreed with them after they requested it of us. The point is, there's nothing you can do. They emailed me and I said, what you think is responsible, we will implement a policy moving forward. And they said, don't care. We're dinging you. Fine. If you're not going to ding the New York Times, I want to see your standard and I want to see you arguing at court and I want it on the record. If they're not going to correct this, look at this. In a January 2020 article, Trump responds to Biden's speech. Everything he touches turns to failure. They said we didn't include a comment refuting the claim. There was no evidence how Speaker Nancy Pelosi denied a request. All we did was report what Trump said, which was a factual statement. So because of that, we get dinged. Trump said, quote, Biden admitted yesterday the 2020 election may have well been a fraud, referring to the upcoming election, mind you. Similarly repeated a false claim about widespread fraud made by the president without noting such claims have been widely and repeatedly debunked. We did not run a story saying fact check. Is what Trump said true? We ran a story. Donald Trump responds by saying X. Because we didn't do an editorial article they wanted, they said we were irresponsible. Okay. Then I think that uh, asked, look at this, asked by uh, NewsGuard about the above challenge, uh, unchallenged claims, Poole sent an email, we will institute a policy immediately on all quotes that are, fa- I didn't say are false. You see what they did here? They've also falsely included this. I said on all quotes moving forward to run fact checks. I, I am deeply offended by this. That is not true. I did not say that. Liars. Anyway, this is what I'm talking about. Ron DeSantis going after these companies because this is the game they play. (sighs) Whatever, man. I'm going to have to send him another email. Injecting words into a quote I did not say. Okay. I expect to hear from NewsGuard or I will be moving forward with litigation immediately. I'll leave it there. Anyway, my point is, from the criminal to the civil issues, I see what Ron DeSantis is doing. and he's, He's going after both. And it'll allow me to include this both as a, hey, we're certified and also look how they lie. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at YouTube.com slash TimCast. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all then.